The VC world, the established venture capital uh, world, for example, is very focused on minimizing risk, as any investor is. And in the VC world, unlike private equity or the public markets, you see very high turnover of entrepreneurs and companies. So you can invest in someone year one, and by year three, they're on to their next company. Or year five, they're on their second company. So you can conceivably have a fund, invest in the same team twice, or once at every fund that you have. So what happens is, on the one hand, that's, that's great. It's great for an investor. They know where to put money in. They minimize the risk. There's a relationship and it's awesome. For the entrepreneur that's made it, it's also great. You know where to go get capital. For the new kids on the block, not so great. Traditionally, a lot of VCs today will say, where'd you go to school? Uh, you know, have you made money for me in the past? Has anyone in your family made money for me in the past? Are you associated with anyone that's made money for me in the past? And if it's a no, 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 you're out of luck. There are folks that are real leaders in the established venture capital community that are out there doing a lot of things from hiring folks to investing in companies led by diverse folks, hiring people, interns, you know, things of this nature. But they're not going to change their strategy to focus on these teams. So one-offs are great, but that's not the strategy that's going to get us to racial equity. The strategy to get us to racial equity is ensuring that we have teams in place that know the community, have the networks, have access, and are committed to investing in the best and brightest. California has 40% of its population today is Hispanic. 40%, it's huge. So the question is, do we believe that in this population, in this demographic, there's some talent? Do we believe there's some innovation, and some creativity like there are in other communities? If it's yes, then there's some assets here, human assets and, and, and human ideas and you know creativity that's just waiting to be uh, supported. So I believe that to have a vibrant country, to have a vibrant democracy, to have a future, a competitive future as a country, we need to include everybody's ideas, everybody's energy, everybody's innovation, everyone's willingness to really buy into the American dream. And that's where we get started.